Every fan of Ken Curtis admires his iconic draw, but few understand how this legendary actor was molded. Beneath his charming demeanor lies a world of surprising truths, and one has finally come to light. Ken Curtis, the man behind the beloved character from the iconic western series Gunsmoke, never anticipated creating one of television's most enduring personas. However, there's a remarkable rumor that has trailed him for years, yet the true story has remained hidden. Stay tuned as we unveil the real story. Early Life and Career Ken Curtis, originally Curtis Gates, was born on July 2, 1916, in Lamar, Colorado. As the youngest of three brothers, his family relocated to Los Angeles when he was 10 years old because his father took up the position of sheriff there. In high school, he was involved in football and played the clarinet, graduating in 1935 during World War II. From 1943 to 1945, he served in the U.S. Army, initially intending to study medicine at Colorado College. However, he soon shifted his focus to pursue his passion for music. His musical journey began in his childhood, learning guitar and signing from his mother. As a teenager, he formed a band with his brother and performed locally. At the age of 17, he entered the music industry by joining the Tommy Dorsey Band, later transitioning to the Shepfields Band. Although his military service temporarily interrupted his aspirations, he continued to entertain troops with his musical talents while stationed in Europe. I'd fly up the river to the one I love. After World War II, Ken returned to the United States and reignited his love for music. In the late 1940s, he became a crucial member of the Sons of the Pioneers, a renowned Western music ensemble. His deep, rich voice perfectly complemented the group's harmonies and Western themes. During his time with them, he recorded albums and appeared in Western films and TV shows, solidifying his reputation as a talented musician. Transitioning to a solo career, Ken continued to excel in the music industry. He released numerous albums, featuring both classic Western songs and original compositions. His versatility as a performer shone on popular TV programs like The Ed Sullivan Show and The Lawrence Welk Show, captivating audiences with his singing and guitar skills. One of Ken's most memorable musical moments happened in the Western film Rio Grande, where he delivered a captivating performance of Tumbling Tumbleweeds, originally penned by Bob Nolan of the Sons of the Pioneers. This rendition not only became a hit, but also cemented Ken's place as an icon in Western music. Despite gaining fame as an actor, Ken remained true to his musical roots, regularly performing at Western festivals and other events enchanting audiences with his unique voice and musical prowess. Ken's lasting legacy as a musician speaks to his unwavering dedication and significant influence on the Western music genre. Even today, his recordings and live shows are treasured by fans worldwide, showcasing his enduring impact on the music industry. Transition from music to acting In 1945, Ken Curtis embarked on his cinematic journey by signing a contract with Columbia Pictures. He initially gained recognition for his roles in musical westerns alongside the Hoosier Hot Shots, establishing himself as a singing cowboy romantic lead. However, his career took a significant turn when he entered his second marriage, forging a connection with renowned film director John Ford. This familial tie opened doors to collaborations with Ford and Hollywood icon John Wayne in notable films like Rio Grande. In this movie, he portrayed a member of the fictional band The Regimental Singers, contributing musical performances that enriched the ensemble. Yet, Ken Curtis solidified his place in cinematic history with unforgettable roles in iconic films such as The Searchers, The Quiet Man, The Wings of Eagles, The Horse Soldiers, and The Alamo. Moreover, he displayed his versatility by starring in the comedy classic Mr. Roberts, alongside icons like Henry Fonda, James Cagney, William Powell, and Jack Lemmon. Despite his success in movies, Ken Curtis left a lasting mark on television. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, he graced the small screen with appearances in beloved Western series such as Have Gun, Will Travel, and Rawhide. These roles, though not leading, cemented his presence as a familiar face in American households. Additionally, Ken showcased his acting range by guest starring in various shows like Gunsmoke, 
where he played Callahan Phil Jakes in a memorable episode called Jayhawkers. His television repertoire extends to an episode of Perry Mason, titled The Case of the Clumsy Clown, where he portrayed circus performer Tim Durant. In 1961, Ken Curtis ventured into television with the series Ripcord. This action-packed show revolved around a company that offered skydiving services and gained attention for its portrayal of the thrilling sport. Ken played the character James Jim Buckley, with Larry Pennell as his protege, Theodore Ted McKeever. Ripcord not only entertained viewers, but also helped popularize parachuting during its two-year stint. Despite exploring new television avenues, Ken Curtis maintained ties with the Western genre. In 1964, he made a guest appearance in an episode of the syndicated series Death Valley Days, titled Graydon's Charge, where he portrayed Moose Skinner Gren, further enriching his extensive filmography. Ken Curtis's career showcases a smooth shift from movies to television. Characterized by a range of roles and standout performances, his impact on both platforms has left a lasting impression on the entertainment world, securing him a permanent spot in cinematic history. Gunsmoke Papa went to work and built this great big firebox right outside the hog pen. Yeah. And then he run the flu right through the pigsty. Ken Curtis rose to prominence for his role as Festus Hagen in the iconic television series Gunsmoke. He joined the cast in 1962 during its eighth season and quickly captivated audiences with its portrayal of the rugged yet lovable Festus. Originally meant for a one-time guest appearance, Curtis's exceptional performance earned him additional episodes and eventually a regular spot on the show. During his 11 seasons on Gunsmoke, Curtis's chemistry with his co-stars, particularly James Arness, who played Marshall Matt Dillon, was instrumental in his success. Their genuine friendship off-screen reflected the authenticity of their on-screen partnership, enhancing the overall appeal of the show. Festus's southern drawl and down-back-home charm connected with viewers, offering a refreshing break from the typically serious tone of the series. As Festus transitioned from a rugged deputy with a troubled history to a more polished character, Curtis's acting prowess shone through. Despite Festus's rough exterior, he was respected for his honesty and loyalty, traits that endeared him to audiences. Curtis recognized Festus's unpredictable nature but emphasized his character's integrity, portraying him as a man true to his word. Off-screen, Curtis fully embodied his role as Festus, Often immersing himself in character for promotional events and fan interactions, he stayed true to Festus's distinctive appearance, sporting a sweat-stained beard, weathered attire, and a charming southern accent. Curtis's commitment to authenticity even extended to his grooming routine, as he carried dull scissors to maintain his character's rugged look while on the go. Despite his growing fame, he remained down-to-earth and approachable, crediting his grounded demeanor to his avoidance of the typical trappings of Hollywood stardom. He expressed sincere gratitude to his fans for their unwavering support, recognizing their pivotal role in his success and expressing genuine joy in engaging with them. Gunsmoke defied expectations with its remarkable success, owed to its captivating narratives, moral undertones, and family-friendly dialogue, appealing to audiences across generations. Ken Curtis believed that the genuine warmth and camaraderie among the cast members translated seamlessly onto the screen, offering viewers a sense of comfort and familiarity. His portrayal of Festus Hagen on the show elevated him to television stardom. Curtis's commitment to his character, both on and off screen, endeared him to fans and secured his place in television lore. Even after the show's conclusion, Curtis's legacy as Festus continues to be cherished by fans worldwide. Personal Life and I said, I just don't know what I have done to make you think that I'm like this. You know, my husband, I said, I really love him and I would never do this. Ken Curtis was not only known for his acting and musical talents, but also for his kindness and generosity. His warmth, humor, and caring nature made him beloved by family, friends, and colleagues alike. Throughout his life, Ken was married three times and had three children. His third wife, Toria Hearn, was particularly significant, not only as a partner, but also as a devoted companion. Toria Hearn Connolly, born on July 31, 1929, in Salt Lake City, Utah, showed a cheerful demeanor and a knack for forming lasting friendships from a young age. Her lively personality was matched by her unwavering commitment, deep faith, and boundless generosity towards others. Tori's family included several sisters, 
each adding to the richness of her life. In 1952, Tori's life changed significantly when she married Ken Curtis. Their wedding was a beautiful occasion, attended by close friends and family, marking the start of a journey together filled with love and companionship. Before marrying Ken, Tori was previously married to Lex Connolly, a chapter in her life that came before her enduring partnership with the renowned actor and musician. Despite life's challenges, Tori remained devoted to Ken until his passing in 1991. Throughout their years together, their bond grew stronger, fueled by mutual respect, affection, and shared experiences. After Ken's departure, Tori continued to display resilience and grace in the face of challenges. Her unwavering faith acted as a guiding light, helping her navigate life's difficulties with unwavering determination. Sadly, Tori's journey came to a close in November 1997, when she peacefully passed away at her home in Fresno, California. In her final moments, she was surrounded by the love and support of her beloved family and friends, a testament to the profound impact she had on those who knew her. Reflecting on Tori Ahern Connolly's life, one cannot help but be moved by her remarkable spirit. Defined by boundless love, steadfast faith, and enduring generosity, her legacy lives on in the hearts of all who were touched by her, forever cherished and remembered with deep affection. Struggles of Ken Curtis Despite his immense fame, Ken Curtis grappled with numerous challenges. Recently, Curtis's daughter confirmed long-standing rumors regarding her father's personal life, revealing the tumultuous relationship he had with his third wife, Tori Ahern Connolly. Amidst the pressures of his career, Curtis turned to tobacco as a coping mechanism, unwittingly worsening his existing heart condition. Over the initial five years of their marriage, Curtis underwent a significant transformation in his approach to health. He opened up to Tori about his struggles, including an undisclosed cancer diagnosis in the late 1960s, which dashed their aspirations of starting a family together. Unable to hide his pain any longer, Curtis accepted his destiny, allowing circumstances to shape their lives. Despite their sorrow, the couple embarked on an extraordinary journey of adoption, embracing two beautiful children as a symbol of their enduring love and commitment, a son named William and a daughter named Danny. Their family continued to expand with the arrival of eight grandchildren, bringing boundless joy into their lives. As Curtis battled his illness, he sought solace in cigarettes during his later years. Tori, burdened by the duties of homemaking, witnessed her husband's struggles firsthand as he carried the financial weight of their household, continually fatigued and battling to maintain his strength in his final months. Curtis's revelations exposed the depths of his depression as he wrestled with hiding his smoking habit. He avoided crowded places and suppressed his cravings to avoid scrutiny. Despite his efforts, Tori bravely shared their untold stories, revealing the hidden struggles they faced together. Curtis and Tori remained committed to each other, even in adversity. Their story reminds us of the resilience of the human spirit and the power of love to overcome challenges. As this chapter ends, Ken Curtis's legacy lives on through the courage shown by both him and Tori. Despite facing immense hardship, Ken Curtis accumulated a net worth of around $5 million by his passing in 1991. His path to financial prosperity began long before he became a star, rooted in his modest beginnings that shaped him into the versatile artist he was. Whether serenading with soulful tunes or portraying characters with unmatched charm on screen, Curtis impressed critics and fans alike. His wealth was mainly due to his varied entertainment career, spanning acting, singing, and songwriting. His memorable portrayal of Festus Hagen on Gunsmoke not only brought him fame, but also significant financial rewards. Furthermore, his musical abilities allowed him to release successful albums and enchant audiences with live performances, further enhancing his income. In addition, Curtis's philanthropic efforts highlighted his dedication to making a positive difference in society, demonstrating a multifaceted approach to both his artistry and his legacy. Despite his Hollywood achievements, he remained down-to-earth and approachable, earning admiration for his friendly demeanor and easygoing personality from colleagues and fans alike. His grounded nature endeared him to many and left a lasting impression on those who knew him. Estimates of Curtis's net worth at his passing vary, with some suggesting $5 million, while others propose it could have been as high as $20 million. Regardless of the exact amount, his portrayal of Festus Hagen significantly contributed to his financial success. 
the enduring popularity of Gunsmoke and Curtis's memorable performance ensured a steady income throughout his career. Additionally, his ability to seamlessly transition between acting and music played a significant role in his financial achievements. His talent as both an actor and a singer allowed him to explore various opportunities within the entertainment industry, resulting in a diverse body of work that resonated with audiences thanks to his charm and wit. From his humble beginnings to his memorable performances on both screen and stage, Curtis's journey epitomizes the pursuit of excellence and the rewards earned through dedication and talent. In his later years, Ken Curtis, a stalwart of Western entertainment, not only showcased his acting skills on screen, but also made lasting contributions in various aspects. His political affiliations became apparent in 1964, when he supported Barry Goldwater during the U.S. presidential election. Yet, it was Curtis's impact on Western entertainment that truly cemented his legacy. In 1981, Curtis received a well-deserved tribute when he was inducted into the Western Performers Hall of Fame at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City, highlighting his significant influence on the genre. Later, Curtis called Clovis, California, his home, where a statue commemorating his iconic portrayal of Festus Hagen proudly stands at 430 Pulaski Avenue, serving as a testament to his enduring legacy. Curtis's influence extended far beyond the silver screen. His impact on Western music solidified his reputation as a true luminary in the genre. Besides his artistic pursuits, Curtis was renowned for his charitable work. His consistent support for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, marked by substantial donations throughout his lifetime, showcased his compassionate nature and dedication to making a positive difference beyond the entertainment industry. His portrayal of Festus Hagen on Gunsmoke remains iconic, charming audiences with his wit and charisma. Additionally, his role in shaping the cowboy archetype and his contributions to Western music continue to inspire artists today. Ken Curtis embodied the essence of Western entertainment. His talent, paired with his kindness and philanthropy, left a lasting impact on all who crossed paths with him. As fans continue to honor his legacy in the genre, Curtis's influence will serve as a guiding light for future generations of artists, ensuring that his legacy endures for years to come. Death and Legacy Curtis was found dead by his wife one Sunday morning, a shocking start to a sudden tragedy. Just the day before, he had been seemingly healthy, attending a local rodeo. However, the cause of his death remains unknown, leaving a void in the lives of those who knew him. On April 28, 1991, at the age of 74, Ken passed away from a heart attack, leaving behind a legacy that transcended his years. His death was not only a personal loss, but also a significant blow to his fans and the Western entertainment industry, where he had made a lasting impact. Despite his physical absence, Ken's presence endures through his enduring work as an actor and musician. His iconic roles are still celebrated by fans, and his performances and recordings continue to resonate with Western music enthusiasts, serving as a timeless tribute to his talent and dedication. Ken's influence on Western entertainment is undeniable, shaping the genre's trajectory and inspiring subsequent artists. His impact on Western goes beyond just filmmaking. He captured the essence of the American frontier authentically and respectfully. Additionally, he played a significant role in popularizing Western music, creating a cultural phenomenon that still resonates with audiences today. Beyond his artistic achievements, Ken's legacy lives on through the inspirations he provided to others. Many actors and musicians credit him as a guiding light in their creative journeys. His influence is felt throughout Western entertainment, showcasing the lasting power of his art. As we honor Ken's life and contributions, it's clear that his legacy extends far beyond the past, shaping both the present and future of Western entertainment. Ken's impact resonates deeply within the realm of contemporary artistry, serving as a benchmark for authenticity and mastery in the field. As enthusiasts fondly recall his memorable performances and enduring music, they honor a figure whose influence transcends temporal and spatial confines. His legacy endures within the hearts of those who appreciate his artistry, ensuring that his contributions to Western entertainment remain eternally cherished and celebrated. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.